Hey everyone, Tech here. Welcome to Tech's Tavern. Grab a brew, pull up a chair, and let's do a quick look at Fallen Enchantress. And to go over this real quick, and I, this isn't going to be a super extensive quick look. I may do that later. May even do an LP on this series, be, on this game, because I'm a very, um, I'm very enchanted with this title so far. And um, it's I've been playing it quite a bit the last few days. This is actually, let me preface this by saying, is this is actually the final, final beta version, literally hours before the release version. Um, and I do know that the release version does have several additions, like uh, new tactical map layouts. The uh, scenario, which you can see scenario is blacked out here, that's where the actual like campaign is going to go. And so there's actually a campaign, there's a lot of stuff in the actual launch edition that is not in this beta edition. Now, I will be getting the full edition and playing over it and doing some a video of it. So I'm basically going to call this probably a quick look of Fallen Enchantress beta, and then I'll do another quick look, look for the launch. But I wanted to do a quick video on this because I've been really enjoying myself on this game, and I'm one of the people who the original Elemental game, Elemental War of Magic, um, I actually was one of those people who pre-ordered that game because I was so hyped for it back in the day. And then a lot of people, I won't rehash the history, but the game really came out half-baked, broken, a lot of features not in implemented and for people who had pre-ordered it or I think bought it within the first month of launch we get this game free so I'm actually getting it for free um, a couple things I'll click through there's a it's fantastic about giving you a literal crap ton of options to configure on the game um, but what this is, the closest thing I can compare Fallen Enchantress to is if you're familiar with the Disciples games. Um, and I'm not talking about the crappy third one, I'm talking about the second one that was really good. Um, Disciples 2. It's similar to that in a way, because you kind of, in Disciples, you would build up your fortress and add things to it. You'd move on an overlay map, you'd move your armies around, then you would go into tactical battles. Um, and I guess you could compare that too to the King's Bounty and the Heroes of Might and Magic. But this game has a lot of things that those games didn't have, primarily in the department of customization to heroes and to your cities and, and things like that. Now the first thing I'll show you here, and I'm just going to get into it real quick, I'm not going to try to drag this out hopefully is you can start off by picking different heroes to play as or actually they're called um, channelers aka sovereigns I guess so you can pick who you want but then you can also do a create a character so you can see there's a whole bunch of different guys here that are the main lore story characters that are um, unwrapped to you I believe there's even a book that chronicles some of the lore and I believe the game when it releases will chronicle more of the lore within the actual campaign game so, but for instance, here's a character I made, named Sierra after my daughter, um, and you can see I was able to go in and set all the unique abilities, I mean, you can just go in and, and create to your heart's content how they look, what they're wearing, what abilities they have, magic schools, um, what, uh, what uh, race they are, so to speak, so that gives some inherent, um, you know, attributes to that, all kinds, which, uh, Capitor, Capitar is who she is with. So, because I'm Capitar, you get these unique items here. Um, there's one of them, the Paradin here. I think they're pretty cool because I've heard people say they're cool because they get um, an ability that allows them to throw down uh, outposts. So, we'll just pick that for right now. And you can see the the main part of the game here is all like a sandbox mode. I mean there is going to be a, a campaign as I said, a main one, but where you really get your your value in this game is with the uh, the sandbox. And there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. Um, I got it right now set to random tiny. I mean uh, even the tiny is pretty large for me. I'm one of those people who I have to play on tiny or small maps because if I play on a huge map it gets so unwieldy and out of control that I just have brain overload and lock up um, so <laughs> and we'll just leave everything default so I can kind of show you but you can kind of see I mean look at all the different settings the AI how many what their victory conditions there's different victory conditions conquest diplomatic you can have a master quest and I think this is really cool they have a spell of making just like on Excalibur 
but um, the spell of making you can actually use that as a uh, victory condition, and it's basically through a it's basically a research uh, victory where you research through the magic uh, tree, which I'll sh I'll show you here in a second. So anyway. Like I said, this is, um, it's a really cool game. I mean, the original Elemental, once they got it patched up, um, I did play it some and enjoyed it, but I didn't really enjoy it as much as I'm enjoying this game because, I, you know, I don't know what it was, was maybe just because some of the uh, mechanics and, and UI interface actions and the way you did things, it was such a hurdle to understand certain mechanics of the game. And in this one, I don't know if it's a combination of that I know some of the mechanics that were carried over from the first game, but also that they did a very good job on the uh, tutorial, which I'll show that on the next video I do. The tutorial... Sole survivor of the royal family Let me see, it has some voiceover stuff, which is really cool. Your father um, but the... Um, the uh, tutorial is very well done, actually. You do a tutorial where you play, and it actually has videos pop up on the screen of one of the developers playing and showing you how to do something. So anyway, this is kind of how the game starts out. And as you can see, it's pretty cool. You zoom out, you get like a little cloth map. You can zoom all the way in, right down to your characters and see them. It has a really neat kind of a uh, hand-drawn art style to it. And this is where you set up your first initial city. And you basically, you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to try to explain too much on this video. I'm just going to show you some real basic mechanics. Um, but you want to pick one of these squares that has the most numbers on it. So I wouldn't want to go on the 421 because there's a 422 right there. <laughs> oh, tech, you're a genius. Um, basically, the grain is the, the green one. Um, or, uh, yeah, the, is grain for food and whatnot and population. And the brown one is, like, production materials. The blue one is um, city enchantments, how many you can put on the city that originates on this square. So probably the best-looking one, actually, is this 432 over here. So we'll move. And it is a full 3D map, which is pretty cool. Check it out. It's like you're playing on some kind of a game board or something. And this is right on a kind of a little river, it looks like, too. So that's actually pretty awesome. So we will settle that. The moment has come. The moment that all your travels, all your battles, all your years of study and swordplay have led to the founding of New Paradin, the capital of the Kingdom of Paradin. Now your story and the story of Paradin, if you follow you, the legions who will flock to your banners in the days and weeks to come, truly begins... Excellent. Alright, so that's our first city right there. And as you can see, it's kind of neat when you scroll out even here on the cloth map view how you can see the markers for the characters and the city and whatnot. That's pretty awesome. You got different things here too. The game has a lot more of an RPG element than some games. Like, you know, some people may be seeing this, it looks like Civ or something. It's, it's quite a bit different actually. If you look at your character, um, your character has all kinds of stats. This is your main character that you're playing with, your main hero. Shows all their different abilities. You can equip them with different um, equipment. Um, you know, there's all kinds of uh, things. You can see the details for their backstory and the spells and things like that. Um, this guy here, this is a champion that I can get to join me. And Hannes, she is a... I've, she's a pretty typical one that you get a lot of times um, and she's pretty good because she brings some of the Earth Apprentice stuff into the fold so I can hire for for 87 Gildar which up here you can see I got 150 I will go ahead and do that so then I can kind of like merge her into my party so then I got two of them to move around and these little green chest icons those are the usually locations of something of interest an item um, and we'll kind of head towards that Let's go ahead and, um, oh, and there's other things too. You'll see, like your city, for instance. A city, you want to, you have different things you can build, construction here. You can see all these different things. Uh, merchants add to your money, clerics, uh, lower unrest, and you can check certain things on your city by going into the city details. You can see unrest is at 22%, so maybe unrest stuff is good. Um, like I said, I'm trying to go through some of this stuff quickly. You can see my money is in the negative right now. So getting extra money would be good right now. So we'll go with the merchant and build the merchant. 
you can also train different units and then as you research it you'll get a ability to more units and you can actually design your own custom units which is pretty cool um, so we got our first building under control there here is a crystal crag that we can actually actually harvest crystals from which those go into effect for um, making some uh, unique items and spells and things like that so we want to build a crystal quarry on there and queue that up and then as our city boundaries expand similar to how Civ works you'll get new things within your domain that you can do you also have researching here you have three trees of research, civilization, warfare, and magic. And again, this is beta, so some of this stuff could possibly change in five hours from now when the new version comes out. Um, but, like I said, in all these, it's really cool the way they did these trees. It reminds me of galactic civilizations, um, which is no coincidence, you know, no coincidence, because it's the same guy who did it all, but it's cool how they put the little icons here where you can actually see very quickly, you know, what's going on here if I do this particular thing. So, you know, if I do this warfare one here, I'm going to get leather armor items, basically. Um... So, yeah, it's 16 turns, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then you have the city enchantments I was mentioning, which is pretty cool stuff. You can actually, depending on how many slots the city has, we will take a look at that here. We can see details. We can see right here the city has two slots up here in this corner to do city enchantments. And based on the city enchantments you have with your heroes, we can see right here city spells these are all the ones we have so we can add initiative to units defense to units uh, material to the city for production is good um, research meditation um, more gildar per essence growth in the city I'm gonna do some enchanted hammers so we cast that spell on the city pretty cool effect the way they do that and then we could actually go ahead and do another one because we can do two. We could do the uh, the growth one. There we go. Awesome. All right, we'll go ahead and end our turn. And then we will truck over this way and see what's awaiting us. All right. Most of what the crates contain has been ruined, except for a single item. Oh, check it out. We got a belt of precognition, 20 dodge versus range attack. That's pretty That's pretty nice for a first item to find, actually. Um, we will equip that. And keep in mind, the cool thing about this is, with the sandbox, as you probably have already guessed, is that um, it's all randomized. So every time you play, it's completely different. The maps are different. Everything is randomized, which is really freaking cool. Um, as you can see here, I, there's some other areas in case I build another want to build another city, which in order to do that, I would want to train and build a pioneer, which we'll go ahead and put that in a queue. And that will help you to build another city. Um, you'll go around and you'll find NPCs that give you quests to do to go kill monsters out of a certain dungeon. I don't see any of that around here, or I would do it. We'll kind of move this way and see what we uncover. I actually don't see very many creatures or anything around me here, which is quite unusual. Let's go this way, actually, because there's like a couple of uh, green chests over here. Check out what's going on. Okay, here we go. We got some... I think we got some action going on over here. Okay, ooh, we got a mace. Excellent, we'll go ahead and equip that. Uh oh, look, we got a bear standing up over here. I think he's wanting to throw down a little bit. We got another item. Ooh, we will equip that staff. Let's go into the trade thing, because maybe I can give something to the other guy. That's 14, 6, 6 of that mace is the best by far. He's got an 11, so that's pretty damn good. We'll just leave, leave that be. So we have some more areas over here you can look over here we got a uh, troll that's pretty crazy now the combat in this game is all uh, done tactical and I'll go fight this bear real quick just to show you how that works um, I'm gonna 
get over there. Um, in turn. All right. Now you can auto resolve if you wanted to, or you can go to battle. And if you go to battle, it goes to a tactical view, which again is fully 3D. You can rotate and zoom in, zoom out, drag the map around how you want to see the action. It's pretty cool. And there's some strategy to it. You can see that I can hover over the bear and see exactly how far he can move. He can move three squares to three. So I kind of want to stay here and let him move to me so I don't give him the free attack. If I was to move up here, he would move up and hit me. So I basically want to pass and see my main sovereign. She has some abilities. I can summon a shadow warg and I can uh, target its plus three to initiative and minus three. Let's go ahead and summon a sh warg. That'd be fun. There we go. Let's send him after the bear. Okay. Alright, so we'll take another attack at him. And then we'll move our other guys up now. Let's kind of let's get on this side. I love how you can move the camera exactly. For people like me who just want to get the angle just how they want it. Oh, look at that. Doggy took him out. And we win the battle. We get one bear pelt. Excellent. And my sovereign levels up. So you can see there's a lot to this game. I mean, there's city building and, and uh, character customizing stats and gear and recruiting people, building armies, customizing armies. There's a lot to it. It's a really cool game. Um, I'm really hoping this game does well. I do plan to do more videos on my channel for it. Um, we'll do the potential. Hey, look at that. We'll do them as a... Uh, Uh, plus three attack versus opponents with a lower initiative. Nice. Let's see if we move on there. Do we get any fat loot? Yes, there is fat loot there. Nice. Increases your line of sight. That is awesome. We get to see one square further. That's the first time I've ever run across that. Okay, and here is one of the quest hubs down here. So you could go down here. I guess we'll do that real quick before I end the video. Oh, our city has gotten one size bigger. Turn it into a town. Ooh. Big nasty there. Man. That guy's bit beyond our pay grade. Alright. New technology leather working. Excellent. Alright. We'll go here. And then it shows you escort noblewoman. You run into a nobleman who requests that you escort his daughter back to her estate. He promises a valuable item as a reward. What do you say? So we get a bow, which is pretty cool. So if you say yes, then you get this woman who is joining your party. And it shows you that I gotta take her to here. So basically we need to avoid the big mean looking guy and go around. But anyway, that is Fallen Enchantress. Um, and like I said, there will be some more videos coming up for it from me. And I may even do an LP series once I get the full version and get to grips with all the mechanics and whatnot. Because I'm still very much learning this game. Um, but it's pretty cool. Um, there's a lot to it. And it's just it's a really, really well done game. You can tell these guys worked on it for a long time and put a lot of work into it. So anyway, that's it. I will catch you guys on the tavern next time.